just happy with that effort. Start of this tournament, first match. Um, just kind of talk about it. Yeah, um, I was happy with the effort. Um, it's always tough playing the first round here. Um, the balls fly. The ball goes fast through the air and slows down once it hits the court, and the bounce is very high. But um, I was very pleased with the way I tactically managed to kind of mix up the pace and and. Um, She's a good player. Um, we, we've practiced quite a bit together, so we know each other's game, but I just kept focused out there and, and just kept uh, playing every point. We've seen you since your good Middle East swing. I'm just curious how you felt out there and how that shows you you're, you're on a good path. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing well right now, and I've had a good start to the year. I played well in the Middle East. Obviously, that took a lot out of me. The weather kind of played games with us a little bit, but. Um, it's it's nice to to feel like I'm I'm hitting the ball this well and hopefully I can just continue um, in this hard, U.S. hard court swing. When really? you look at a draw like this and you see, I never look at the draw, so I don't know who I'm playing. I don't know uh, anything, is and this, I don't want to know. So. Is this true though? This no look at the draw thing we hear that from players a lot, but is that legit? You do you go out of your way to not see it? That is legit. <laughs> yes, I don't know who I play. I know I play now. Um, Sinyakova because she beat uh, Soares Navarro, but um, I never look f further ahead than that. I but I'm, I'm coming from perspective more like no Serena, no Petra, no Vika. Do you, do you see an opportunity? Hey, it's opened up a little bit. I could have <coughs> Even with those players in the draw, I feel like I have a good chance. Serena obviously is playing very well, and when she's on fire, she's um, the best player in the world. But um, other than that, I don't really... Um, get nervous um, playing against any uh, any player on tour. Caroline, you're working with Sasha now, and you've mentioned he's kind of more than just a hitting partner, a bit of an assistant coach. Can you tell us a little bit about what he's bringing to your game and, and how he's helping you? Well, you know, he can play um, different type of balls to me that I that I need um, for different opponents, and you know, he talks to my dad about some tactical stuff, and that's that's. After Dubai, just with how taxing that two weeks was, what was your kind of re recovery plan? How um, long did the racket stay in the bag? Uh, in the well, body my plan was to um, to take probably four or five days off, but um, someone in my team thought that three days would be more than enough. So, um, so I had three days off, and then I was back on court training. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, uh, Maria Sharapova just received a wild card to Stuttgart, and um, I'm wondering what your thoughts are about her return, return and whether she should be receiving wild cards, uh, especially <coughs> with discussion going on about whether she'll receive one to Roland Garros. Um, well, first of all, I think obviously she's a good draw to tennis, to women's tennis in general. Um, that's that's one, but but two, you know, I think it's very questionable allowing no matter who it is, a player that is still banned to play a tournament that week. I think that's, uh, from the tournament side, I think it's disrespectful to the other players and the WTA. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Obviously, um, rules are, are twisted and turned in favor of who wants to do what. Um, you know, I think everyone deserves a second chance. And I think that... Um, you know, um, she's going to come back and she's going to uh, fight her way back and, and I'm sure she's going to play well. But at the same time, I feel like when a player is banned for drugs, I think that someone should start from the bottom and, and fight their way back because it's different from an injury where someone is out not because they, they had hurt themselves. And, you know, that way I feel like a player should be able to receive as many wild cards. But when someone has been banned for drugs and something that is performance enhancing. I think that you deserve a second chance. Like everybody else, people make mistakes, but I think you should fight your way back from the bottom. So what you, just to clarify, what you're saying, Caro, is one of two things. One is that maybe the wild card should not be available, and two, that even though the ban ended mid-Stuttgart, that she shouldn't be allowed to play Stuttgart, but it start the following week. I think she should be able to start the following week. I think once a tournament is started and a player is banned, I don't think that a player should be allowed to play that week. I think that's um, that's how I see it. Um, you know, 
I think, again, as I said, um, people can make mistakes and, and things can happen and, and people deserve a second chance. But I feel like when someone is banned for drugs, um, they should fight their way back from, from the start and from like everyone else. Can I, can I just ask, going back to um, playing somebody like Lynette, and you've said you've hit with her a lot. Are you learning every time you play somebody, even if you've played them a number of times, are you picking up new things, different things about playing them? And do you keep a log? Do you keep a book with notes and things like that? Um, my book is my team, basically. Um, I think I, I used to, back when I started on tour, write down things about the other players, but I think now I've been on tour so many times or so many years and played the same people so many times. You kind of know their game, and um, you go out and watch a couple of games. Maybe they've switched something up, um, changed something. But at the end of the day, I think um, your main priority is to play your game and, and try and force them to play the way you want them to play. And if that doesn't work, then you go to Plan B, and that's you know going into the real tactical mode. Carolyn, can I ask you about balancing off the court and on the court a little bit? We cover Jeannie Bouchard a lot, and she's been taking a little bit of heat for not being able to perform on court because she's got a lot of stuff going on off court. You do a lot of things, you do modeling, promotional sponsor stuff. How do you balance the two, and is there any way that, you know, is that why she's having trouble on the court because she's going, doing too much, or can you just clarify that a little bit? I think... Um I think I have the experience and I've been on tour for so many years and know what it takes um, obviously to um, to be a target week in and week out. But to be honest, I think I just love what I do. I take the opportunities I get because you never know how long I'm going to play or how long you're going to get these opportunities. And I, you know, I go back on the practice court. That's my main priority is to be a better tennis player. And then I fit everything else around that. Um, I also think that... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I just I just do my thing, and, and I love what I do. I think that's the Is it the tough secret. to balance it, though? Is it difficult to, I mean, do you have to spend more time on the court when you're doing those things just because of that? No, I think it's never really been hard for me because uh, my main priority is the tennis, and my main priority is to prepare the best that I can to be a better player and to, to prepare the best I can for the tournament that I'm playing, and everything else takes second priority. Um, so for me, once I know that I've done everything I could on the practice court, you still have hours in, in your day. And sometimes you're like, well, I need to relax. I need to rest. I need to really, you know, close everything down. And I have weeks where I basically feel like a 98-year-old woman. You know, I just eat, sleep, and, uh, and hit a few balls, and that's it. And um, then I have weeks that are really busy, but where I feel like I have the energy to do stuff. And, and that's when, when I... Um, you know, when I work in the shoots and, and my sponsor commitment. Just Caroline, one, you're, uh, you've obviously an active player and you've known Tommy Haas for a while. Being around tour, what, are your, what were your thoughts when he got named to this job? I guess it was back in, during the French Open and how you interacted with him at all in his new role. I think it's great. I think it's, um, he, he was a very likable player and I think he's always been supported of, uh, supporting of the women's uh, tour as well. And I think you know, he, he reached out to, to quite a few players uh, before the tournament and asked for things that we thought maybe could be improved in the tournament, and I really appreciated that. And I think the fact that he's been a top player himself and he's been on tour for so many years, he knows what players want and needs, and I think that has been very helpful. And, and obviously, this is an amazing tournament, and everyone loves coming back. So, you know, he's gotten a good job. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not hard, but I'm just saying... It's not that many things that he could really do that much better because it was an awesome tournament. I think how things ended last year with the controversy around Ray Moore's remarks on the final day that like sort of reestablishing or repairing relationships with the women's players in particular was important or somebody who would, who would be popular among that group? I think definitely, um, I think the tournament just thought that, you know, they need someone who will be positive and, and popular amongst all players. I think this tournament is so liked and, and everyone loves coming back here. So I really think that last year's comments are kind of forgotten now and, and we just move on, you know. Um, I think they did the right thing by uh, hiring Tommy Haas to, uh, to be the tournament director. Well, Karen, no, just, going back to, just going back to the point about off-court activities, you've done SI about three, four times. What, with the 
you, and you've tweeted a, quite a few of those pictures. Do they give you the pictures? Do you have, have you put them in frames? What do you do with, with those sorts of things? Um, I, I've kept all the magazines, for sure. I kind of have a stash of things that I've done and, and been in. and um, You get the some of the files sometimes from different shoots that maybe one day, I don't know, maybe I'm going to put them in frames and keep them somewhere. I don't know. It may also be slightly weird to have yourself up on the walls. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it's something I can be very proud of. And, and, you know, years down the line, you know, when you have your family and kids, and you're maybe not in your best shape of your life, you can tell your kids, well, your mom used to look like this. <laughs> your mom used to be cool. <laughs> she used to do different stuff and not just sit at home. And uh, you talked a little bit about I think so. I think the fact that I can mix the game up and the pace and, and do different things on the court, I think that's definitely helped me in many games and many matches. And um, I definitely think that that's, um, that's a big advantage that I have. And the fact that I have great uh, wheels and I can, I can run, a, run a lot of balls down, that also helps me when you know, you're not feeling the best and, and you just uh, all you have is, is being the wall back there and just kind of wait it out and, and then go for your shots when when it's wide open.